Hello there, YouTube. I missed you guys. It's been a long time since I put out a video. I've uh, been doing home improvement, and that's finally done as of last week. Um, I also did it during the summer to escape some of the heat. I'm down here in Arizona, um, but today's December 4th, and it's still not upper 80s, so it's still kind of still kind of warm. Uh, but today, we're going to go through this 77 K10 truck. I'm going to put new rotors on it, new caliper, or I'm going to rebuild the calipers, new brake pads, new brake hardware. I'm going to flush the system, put new wheel cylinders in the back. So I'm going to kind of take you through it, show you how easy it is, um, the tools you'll need to get it done. And, uh, and you'll be surprised at how cheap it is. I think I went on Amazon, I ordered all AC Delco parts and the total cost I want to say was less than a hundred dollars. So, um, in the description, I'll put down all the part numbers that I bought and the prices. Um, so maybe, you know, you can tackle it too. I think most break shop places charge, um, three, four, four maybe three to $500 to do a break job. And I'm going to show you how to do it for a hundred bucks in a couple afternoons of your time. Okay, once you get the wheels off, um, you're going to want to take the calipers off. And the, uh, after I get the wheels off, I noticed that uh, these calipers really, or these rotors really aren't that worn. Um, they probably could have been turned, but, um, or maybe they have been turned. I don't know. But I don't know. To get them turned, you got to take them somewhere. I prefer to spend 30 bucks um, on each side uh, versus maybe 10, 15 to get them turned. Uh, we're going to get started. And on the back of these calipers, you're gonna have a bolt here, it goes all the way through to the other side, it just screws into this part. You'll see it's got threads there, and then uh, this bolt up there. And what I'm gonna use is a 3 8 Allen on a socket. Um, if you just have Allen wrenches, those work too. And uh, just take them off. Okay, so I've got them both loose, um, and you'll see the threads are right here. So really the thread just screws into this part of the caliper bracket and holds it in place. Um, same thing on the top. And one thing I did notice is that there's a lot of brake like brake pad life left in there. Um, you can see it pretty big there, and then I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of a lot of pad left. Um, one of the problems I was having is if I'd slam on the brakes, this tire would here would lock up, um, and then the brakes seemed to be not that well. So I don't know if they just weren't um, set after they were installed um, by slamming on the brakes and doing the heat cycle thing, um, but. I just, you know, for a hundred bucks and peace of mind, I'm going to swap out everything, make them like new. So uh, basically these bolts just come out again, they just go through and the caliper rides on the non-threaded part. So you'll see, we got to put that back together. We use plenty of grease. This didn't have much grease in it. Uh, maybe that's why it was locking up. You know, I don't know. It's pretty dry. Um, usually, usually you want to see a lot of grease on that allows that caliper to move back and forth. And then, so once you get that off, the caliper really just kind of pulls out. Um, it's going to be hard for me to do to hold the camera and pull it out. Um, but it just it just pulls straight out this way. Sometimes you'll have a lip on the edge here, which there is a little bit of a lip. And if that's the case, I'm going to get a screwdriver in there um, and just compress this caliper just a little bit. And then I'm going to hang it on this wire. Because if you don't hang it on this wire, you're going to get tons of negative comments um, on your YouTube video. So mostly because... It puts tension on this rubber hose um, and can damage it. So you want to support the weight of the caliper um, and not let it just dangle from that hose because you'll hurt the hose and then you'll get tons of negative comments um, in your comment section. So nobody wants that. Okay, here we go. We're going to uh, attempt to pull that off. Um, let me get a screwdriver. Again, just get it in there, uh, push up against the caliper. And it's just, just enough to squeeze the, the brake pad and push that cylinder back in just a little bit. That should be enough. See, this comes right out. Hanging on the wire. Don't need those comments. Oops, not long, not short enough. Or I could just wedge it up there and then hope it doesn't fall. I mean, that's always an option too. I think that's, uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. So, as you can see, I just got it wedged, wedged right up in there. It's not going anywhere. Trust me, I'm a professional. So here we go. So now we got the caliper off. Um, spins pretty easy. I was also thinking about changing out the wheel bearings, um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. So right now, we're going to pull. For now, we're going to pull uh, this hub off, and then I'm going to show you all the pieces and how it comes apart. 
Uh, it's very easy to take apart, very easy to put back together. So stay tuned and here we go. All right, here we go. We're gonna pull that apart. I got a uh, five thirty seconds. Uh, Alan, uh, hold on. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock these all loose. Hopefully they're not for you. Hopefully they're not too tight. Um, I already had this part once cleaning it, so and then it'll come apart. And so there you go. Uh oh. Just kidding, that's the plastic part. It goes inside the chrome part. Um, so we're gonna set that out on the workbench. And I recommend, if you haven't done this a lot, to put them in order as you take them apart. That way you won't forget how they go back together. All right, these are gonna be pretty dirty, pretty greasy. So I'm just gonna use a little rag here, uh, wipe that out. I know there's some, some snap rings in there we're gonna have to get access to. Um, this is the first one right there. So once I get this cleaned up, uh, hopefully I'll go in there, do a deep dive, and show you all how to get that snap ring out of there. Okay, so I got my trusty pick tool here from Harbor Freight. But anyways, so there's a clip in here. You're going to want to get in there and dig it out. All right, never mind. Take your, take your truck to a dealership. This is, this is a pain in the ass right here. And it's basically it's a snap ring that goes to the outside, so um, you really can't pull it together. It's just a, it's just a ring. So you got to get underneath it and pry it out of its groove. Okay, I was able to get the one side loose. So I want to give you a shot of what that looks like. So you got this clip, basically dig it out of the groove, and then it, oh shit, it went right back in there. Oh. All right, here's that mischievous ring. So it's able to get most of it pried off on this side, and then you can just kind of take it. Again, putting everything in order um, that I took it out. And then one of the things I'm going to do here is take one of these bolts. I'm going to thread it into this deal there. Um, it was being held in by that snap ring, but now that it's not, I'm going to wiggle it. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right. Again, two hands. So check that. We're going to take two bolts. Screw it on each side. <laughs> I began this video, I said this was easy. Oh man, I don't know what I was thinking. Here we go. Okay, so now you see we got this snap ring here to deal with. Uh, I'm just gonna use some simple snap ring pliers, get in there, pull it out, and then if it's not all rusty, you can see it's just gonna come out, it's gonna wanna come out on its own. Again, I'm setting everything on my table in order of how it's coming apart. Then this will come out. Um, then you got a spring. Okay, so once you get that spring out, um, you're gonna see there's a nut in there, I guess, and it's hard to see with the camera. Um, but trust me, there's a there's a nut in there that you're going to want to use um, this tool on. And so we get the focus. And it pause right down that part number. Um, but it's a spindle nut. It's got these four little tangs on the outside. This one's a two and three eighths inch outer four lug. So I'm just going to stick that in there. Inside those little tangs. And then hope that it's not too tight. And it comes right out. So how about that? Um, and it's easy. You just uh, stick it in there. Just unscrew it. Again, just a simple little nut with the four tangs on it. Again, putting everything in order on my workbench here. And I think there should be a like a thrust washer in there. And we'll go in, pick that out. Then there should be another nut on the inside. And 
that's what sets the preload. Um, you can see it's got the tangs in it as well. Uh, maybe can, maybe can't. But and then here's the here's the washer. It goes in between the nuts. Again, I'm putting everything in order. Everything's going in order on the workbench. And if my memory serves me correct, this one should just be about hand tight. Yeah, it is. So this comes out, and then once you get this nut out, pretty sure that rotor and hub will come out at that point. And then um, put that on the table, and then this hub should come off just like that. Um, and there's the hub, it is off. Okay, so here's the old hub we just took off. Uh, well, this is the hub. Then this is the brake rotor down here. So this is the new rotor. So in order to swap these out, um, you've got to get, you, you got to pound, or preferably press, um, all these uh, lug nut studs off, or lug studs, wheel studs, I don't know what they're called. But you got to press all those out. So we'll go over to my press and uh, get started on those. Okay, for the next part, we're going to use this strong way. Um, 12 ton hydraulic shop press. Uh, I bought this online and I think it was 130 bucks, 140 bucks from Northern Tool. Um, again, you're probably sitting at home. I thought you said this was easy. It is easy. Um, so, I don't know, think about the money. We're in it for $100 in brake parts, uh, $20 for that socket with the four little things on it. And then, I don't know, 130 bucks on this uh, thing right here. And you're gonna have your brake job done. So I will uh, put the camera roll. Oh, not so bad. Slid it up a little bit. Then I can spin it and I'll be able to tap that out with a hammer. Um, but you just do this, uh, do it six times and they will all be out. Okay, so we're back on the workbench. We've got the lug nuts right there. Um, so this part, the hub, should just come off. Screwdriver, make it easier, there we go. So the hub's off. Uh, so right now what I'm gonna do is, this will be it for today. Um, I was thinking about this. I'm gonna clean this out of my parts washer. And to get this bearing out to clean it, I gotta take the seal off. So I'm gonna damage the seal when I take it out. So I gotta go buy new seals and then I'm going to clean this up, put new grease in it, and then um, tomorrow we'll be back at it, put it back together. Okay, so I got my seal puller, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that seal out. And then I already got the bearing out on the other side. Um, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead. I got the hub mounted in my vise, and I got my seal puller. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that seal out um, so I can get that bearing out and then clean it, the whole hub. and. Comes right out. And then, actually, oh, I was gonna say, actually I could probably reuse it, but I'm feeling this rubber, it's hard as hell. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. They're probably less than five bucks. So and there's the uh, dirty bearing, that dirty bearing. So we're gonna get those cleaned up in the parts washer, and then we'll be back for reassembly. Now I've got all the parts cleaned up and kind of put back in order of how they'll go in. Uh, I'm going to next uh, press the uh, studs back in um, with the rotor on the hub. It's all cleaned up and I was able to sandblast both sides of uh, the mounting flange, one for the wheel, one for the rotor. Make sure there was no rust in there causing it to be uneven. And this will go back together. Um, you want to grease the bearing, then drop it into the hub, and then put the oil seal in. And then slide the hub on, put that seal on, put the spring on with a little cup. Then this nut to preload the bearings, this one to, I don't know, act as a washer in between this nut and that nut, and then you tighten the shit out of that one. And then uh, these pieces slide in, cut the snap ring, that goes in, that goes in, another snap ring, and then you bolt the hub back on. So pretty easy. Um, so here, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to take you through the press again, uh, but it's pretty much the exact opposite. Instead of pressing them out, I will be pressing those studs back on. 
for this part, uh, I just put it up in the old press here. Um, this plate kind of came with it. Uh, threw some washers in there. This aluminum block that I've got, and then I found uh, an extra deep well socket. For some reason, I've got two 18 millimeter deep well sockets, and it works perfectly. So you get that up there against the flange of the hub, and then on top, you just uh, start cranking it down, and it'll press it right in there. And then, sorry for the shakiness. And then once it gets tight, you know it's seated. There, seated, done. So just do that uh, six times on each side and easy, easy to go. Okay, now we got everything cleaned up and got the rotor pressed under the hub with those studs. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack these bearings full of grease. Um, so typically what I do is I'll take a big glob of my Lucas Red and Sticky out of my grease gun, put it into my palm, and then I'm gonna press it in between this gap, between this outer bearing holder and the inner race or whatever you want to call that um, so i just cram it in there and i keep spending it until i feel that it's got a lot of grease in there and then i feel i'm done i don't know um, there's probably a thousand different ways to do this i bought it a, a tool once where you clamped it on and squirted it in it never seemed to work but i don't know i just find this to be the easiest way Again, I use this uh, Lucas Red and Tacky, Red and Sticky, Red and something. Um, saw some videos online where they said it was, um, you know, I don't know, it performed the best in bearings. So this guy, uh, some kind of a farm channel, farm guy, farm something. But yeah, there we go. See, I'm just cramming it in there um, on the sides, and you'll start seeing it push out in between the bearings, and you know it's packed in there. But this is a. This is an extremely important step, um, and in a lot of situations, I replace the bearings. Uh, typically, actually, I always replace the bearings, but in this circumstance, I'm just, I don't drive this truck often, pretty much just to Home Depot or Lowe's or the furniture store or whenever I need to haul something big. And it's just a work truck. Um, if I was restoring it, then it would get new bearings, uh, but this one... And then I'm going to pack it in on the front as well, just to make sure I get it all in there. But yeah, so typically I, I put new bearings, new races, and I always wonder if it really needs them or not. Because I've never had, you know, freaking old, and I've never had a bearing go bad. So I, I don't know. Um, you decide. I, uh, I am not going to recommend it one way or another, but... Like I said, I've always replaced bearings, never had one go bad, maybe because I keep replacing them, so we'll see. Uh, so now I'm going to reuse this old bearing. Um, the races looked, they didn't look awesome, but they looked okay. Bearings look okay. There's no signs of overheating, no bluing anywhere, but I don't know. There we go. So this one's packed. Um, you'll see the grease is everywhere. When I spin it, there's a lot of resistance, so... I feel that one's good to go. Now I'll just do the other one, and I'll be ready to assemble. And then, uh, so I'm going to drop this bearing in now. Uh, it's got enough grease on there for the for the race. I'm going to drop that in again, and then the uh, I'm going to press that press that seal in, and then uh, it'll be ready to install. Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to use my Harbor Freight U.S. General. 81 millimeter. I'm going to use the large flat side. Put it. You never really want to pound these in without having something on them because your chances are good you're going to warp that seal and then have to drive to the auto parts store and spend another six bucks. Right, so I'm just going to tap it in. I'm just going to tap it in towards flat or flush. There it is, nice and flush. One seal installed. Part of the spindle that that seal rides on, I put some grease on there already. So when you slide the spindle on with that seal, um, it should slide and, and fit on there as it's supposed to. So here we go. I'm going to reassembly. So we get the spindle.
in. Okay, so that's uh, first part's in. You want to take your bearing, right cone side in, push that in. I'm going to take this nut um, again. This is the one. It's got a little nub on it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's got a it's got a little nub on it. And you want to put that in with that nub facing out because it's going to hold the washer that goes on next. What do they call it? Your spindle nut tool. And just spin it on there. I'm sure there's a torque setting here um, that a lot of people care about, but I've never used a torque setting either. Never had a bearing fail, never used a torque setting. I uh, kind of just do it by feel. Once it starts to tighten up, then I'll start to spin the, the rotor. Because you want to have enough preload in there. So there we go. And these bearings are used. So new bearings, you might want to go a little tighter until they seat. Uh, but these ones are the originals. And I am going to tighten that up just a little bit more than hand tight. But not much more. I don't know. Using that German spec, good and tight. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to put this washer in. Um, there's a tang portion of the spindle. I'm going to make sure that it goes in there. And then you're going to want to find that nub, wherever that nub was at. And make sure it fits into one of the holes on this washer. I see it's down there. And it's right in there. So now I'm going to take this outer nut. And this kind of locks, locks the whole shebang together. Keeps it from coming apart. This on bitch was tight, let me tell you, getting it out. So, again, I don't know what the specs are. I'm not going to look it up. Um, if I was restoring this car and planning to sell it to somebody, I would absolutely be looking it up and making get my torque wrench out, making sure it's all perfect. But this is my car, it's my shop truck, and good. Still spins, it must be all right. I don't go crazy with the grease. Um, I see a lot of people, man, they just empty a whole tube in there. And I don't know, I don't, um, again, I've never had, I've done so many brake changes with new rotors and spindles. Um, I've never, I've never used a shit ton of grease and I've never had a problem. Um, actually, the only problem I have is it being really clean if you want to consider that a problem. All right, so now we'll put the spring in. Now that everything's greased up. Again, the skinny, it's cone shaped. So the cone top goes in first. And then this piece goes in and you'll see it's got a groove back here that that spring. All right, I'm wrong. But the skinny side, so I'm gonna do some editing there. The, uh, the cone side, the short side comes out of that spring. This is going to be fun. So we're going to want to put these two together as a mated pair. Grab my snap ring, snap ring pliers, and attempt to do this in one shot. All right, I'm going to have to move the axle a little bit. There we go. That goes in there. I'm going to push it in, hold it in with my thumb. Use my snap ring pliers. Push that in there. It snaps, it's sealed. And that's pretty much it. Um, it is now, for the most part, assembled. So, and then this piece, in addition to this piece, all gets held in. And if someone's been banging around on the end of these hubs, and mushroomed it. You get a lip, it gets a little tough to, to swing by, but take your hammer, 
probably why this hub's all messed up. Somebody who's using a hammer like that. So then after that, you're going to want to stick this, this clip back in there. Um, just kind of feed it in by hand. It goes, actually, I'm going to start it this way. Take these screws out. Get it started. Just push it in. Clip it in place. Done and done. There you go. Um, I'm going to put the cap back on. Put a little bit of grease in there maybe. Ah, probably not. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put the cap back on and we'll move to the other side. Okay, so before I put this on, um, I just want to ask the uh, the public. There's an O-ring that goes in here right in a groove around it. I haven't been able to find it. Um, can't find a part number. Can't find anybody who sells it. Um, but So if anybody out there knows where they sell those, um, I could use four. So just uh, if you do, uh, please put a note in the comments and everybody can benefit. Thank you. Okay, well, I got this side done. Um, Without filming, it took me about, uh, about an hour and a half to get it apart, cleaned up, pressed, and put all back together. So it is done just like the other side. So, but I am going to take some of this uh, caliper grease, goop it in there. Oh, come on, light? Seriously? Man, that's disappointing. All right. Uh, all right, so I'll put some goop in there, and then along the back. So the reason brake pads squeal is because of vibration. They vibrate and then that's what causes the sound. Um, they put this little black pad on there to help with that. I also found that if you goop a shit ton of this caliper grease on there, um, it solves it as well. So I've never, fortunately, I've never had uh, squealing brakes anymore since I started doing that. And then, on your brake kit, you're gonna get these, and I don't like these at all. Um, I never know if it goes this way or that way. Then they never seem to fit right, and I don't know. We'll see. Um, but on this one, it's gonna ride on the caliper down here. So, again, I'm gonna get pretty liberal with that stuff, and then goop the shit out of it on the back. Because I don't want these to squeak. Nobody likes that. Especially me. All right, so now we'll go down here. And there we go. That's it. Brake pads are in. So I took the pens. I just went to my wire wheel on my grinder um, and just wire wheeled them. I didn't want to sandblast these because I think these have a little coating on them as well. I'm going to put some grease on them. You know, I like to use a liberal amount of this stuff. Just no squeaking, no brake problems. So now we will take this up. Okay, so I got my, just sitting up here right now for the moment. There we go. So now it's uh, in place. I'm gonna take these pins, get that one started, and then um, I'm gonna screw them in. And then that's pretty much it. The uh, brake pads and caliper are installed. Um, if you're not rebuilding the caliper or changing out your brake fluid, you'd be pretty much done once you tighten these two bolts up.